Welcome everybody to the four o'clock hour at Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton. Busy day at Go Local, starting off uh, with a big story this morning, a fight between the Cianci family and Trinity Rep. Nothing gets better than that in Rhode Island. Uh, you could speak to some of those issues. Uh, Kate Nagel was at the airport bright and early this morning, seeing off uh, mm -hmm. Special Olympians heading out to Abu Dhabi, representing Rhode Island in the, mm -hmm. in the United States. And as well, she's now up at the State House, I believe, just about to talk to uh, Seth Magaziner on his financial literacy initiative. John Simmons is here, head of RIPEC, Rhode Island Public Expenditure Council. He's got a new report out on the state of education and some guidance on that. Uh, We've got some education issues here in Rhode Island. I think we do. If you look at it, we have a convergence of a commissioner who is indicating that he's leaving. We have a superintendent in Providence who is leaving. We have the RICAS uh, tests, which have shown that we are way underperforming versus our neighbor to the north, Massachusetts. Uh, a lot of these issues that becomes education is much more important as we look at Rhode Island now and in the future. So education is really, I don't want to use the word, the typical one of crossroads, but we are at that point where we needed to take a, back, a step back and look at where we are and what do we need to do next to improve uh, the education system in Rhode Island. Why are we in this situation? You worked for the City of Providence. I was on the City Council both a thousand years ago. Uh, you know, the old adage was, we can't fix this overnight. We didn't get here in one day. It's going to take us years. We're at the same place we were 25 years ago. But the only difference is states like Massachusetts have figured this out. Their economy is exploding. It's not only exploding, but it's creating long-term growth opportunities and high, high wages. We're so dependent on, you know, pay less shoes closes 10 stores, and we lose 200 workers. Well, it's a great question. And so what we looked at was said, why are we where we are and what are we not doing? We looked at Massachusetts as one of the best, uh, if not the best, uh, education system in the country. It's ranked high in the na international range. Other states have looked at Mass. We have we looked at Mass, and then we tried to look at underlying research on what are they doing versus what we're doing. So our report really went into what they're doing in Massachusetts versus what we've been doing. We have been more piecemeal in our approach to reforming education. Massachusetts, 15 plus years ago, sat back and said, "We want a game plan." It was structured, it's been stayed with for the 15 years. They have a high stakes testing, uh, they've stayed that course, they have a curriculum and they have high standards, the assessment it is, it is quite good, it's quite thorough. We have not done that, we have slowly, essentially slowly over time, taken what we want the same standards uh, that they have, uh, we want now the same test or assessment that they have. And so we're now looking at ourselves much clearer, and this is the first year with the RICAS test in, in Rhode Island versus the Massachusetts one that we can compare ourselves. And, what and it's we, ugly. And it's ugly. It's not a, it's, we then looked at, well, there's a lot of uh, explanations of why we're not as good as Massachusetts. So our report went through those common things that people say, well, we don't do it like Mass does. For instance, the demographics, we are different. Well, we looked at districts where there are similar demographics, and they out, still outperform us by about 40 to 50 percent better. That we're at 60, they're at 60 plus, we're at 30 in the range of performance or proficiency. We looked at funding, and we're about the same amount. We've been higher than Massachusetts over a number of years. Last year or so, we've been a little under them. We looked at a, some of the other social determinants about college uh, degrees for parents. They have more. Uh, parents that have college degrees than we do, but that does not explain the market difference between the two. Listen, they have Lowell, Lawrence, Fall River, New Bedford. Those cities are doing substantially better than some of our suburbs. Yes. In our suburbs, our best school districts are still, you know, nowhere near, they're still right. 20 points out of 50 percent worse than the ones in Massachusetts, yeah. comparable ones, even some that have a higher demographic need than we do here. So we, are, we don't have a system in Rhode Island that competes or compares with Massachusetts. So that was your, your the purpose Your report looks at, at governance and breaks yes. down two important issues. To yes. Talk yes. about those two. Yeah, the two issues we looked at, and we'll use a <coughs> terminology, that we have two posts at either end. One is the standards, and the other one is the assessment. We have the same as Massachusetts. So what we looked at is what's in between that that we don't do, that they do. The 
first one that comes out, and we'll use curriculum frameworks and curriculum. It's the scope and sequence of what you teach, when you teach it, to what depth you teach it. They have a curriculum, they have a curriculum framework that's uniform throughout the state. They have curriculums that are approved for their quality and we refer to as alignment. So a simple explanation is when you're teaching a course, you have to have a test that comes back. If you don't teach that subject matter when you get to the test, it's hard for the student to be it. Uh, or do yeah. you teach it to the level when you want it? That's the scope and sequence. That's what they do in Massachusetts. We do not. They also have all the materials, support materials for teachers and others that say, okay, here's the exam or test that I would give on World War II. Here's the materials, the instructional materials, books, lesson plans that are so, all provided that are aligned with the assessment and standards. We don't do that. So this is a great point. Critics say, well, you're teaching to the test, so blah, blah, blah. And uh, as if the test is then degraded. Isn't it the smart thing? I mean, when you, when you get to college, you don't learn everything about a subject. You learn what the professor wants you to know about yeah, the subject yes. and then are able to make some level of and analysis. There's, there's substantial enough research. If you don't have a curriculum that is aligned, then you're, you're teaching people subject matters that they'll never be tested. If you don't, you have to take the concept of the assessment. Right. The assessment is testing. It's assessing where the student is versus what you want them to know. It's not teaching to the test. It is assuming that this is the level of knowledge we want you to have at the time that we think it's appropriate that the assessment does it. So the assessment measures it. So we believe that you're teaching to the standards as opposed to the assessment. And it, it's not teaching to the test. But again, if you believe the assessment you know, does have the ability to say, here's where you are. And the MCAS test and the RICAS test, one of the best parts of that using it now is there is a documents or material in it that goes back to every student that right, says, absolutely. okay, this here's where you're sure, here's what you need to do, which we don't Talk have. about the other governance issue. Yeah. I just want to finish on the other one. Sure. The other one is professional development. Yep. And here's where we don't have any in Rhode Island as well, is it anywhere related. The professional development of mass is actually related to the, the curriculum, the standards, and the assessment. So we teach the teachers what they should be doing, how they should be doing it, and support them. We don't do that in Rhode Island. So if you take that curriculum and you add all of the features of it, the support services, et cetera, we don't do that. The other is our administration or governance of it is done on more of a statewide basis for some, and on the local level, it is done on the district level. Yeah. Mass, a number of years ago, went to what they call site management. So each school is run by a principal. There is a working committee around the principal. The principal is given authority to hire and fire. Therefore, you bring the education down to the school and into the teacher's domain. Those are the two pieces when you look them together uh, with the professional development and the rest. Is you have a really a system. It's a coherent system uh, that we don't have in Rhode Island that has been applied in Massachusetts and in other states. Um, parents can't pack up and leave, but the two of the biggest, most important decision makers in Rhode Island are packing up and leaving. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wagner, our commissioner, and the Providence yes. superintendent, both who came to their positions with, mm -hmm. I think, excellent reputations. Yeah. I think people have thought both of them are thoughtful, uh, committed individuals. Um, if you go and look at the governor's inauguration, the governor's state of the state, and the governor's budget, you don't see a big emphasis on mm -hmm. the improvement of K through 12. You see early childhood education, and you also see Rhode Island promise. But on the K through 12, which some have said, listen, we need to call out the National Guard on this thing, why aren't we seeing a cohesive movement towards reforming education across the board? There's more of that today. As a matter of fact, the Board of Ed, uh, the, I guess it's the Council on, uh, on Elementary and Secondary Education met last night. They went through this curriculum issue. They are all now supportive. We now are looking at a more cohesive, as actually Wagner was talking about that last night, that we need a more cohesive aligned system. I think yeah. we're all there. Sometimes it seems like why we want to have the local prevalent, you know, local positioning on what they should do curriculum, et cetera, and the rest. We believe it has to be a combination of it. I think most people are now there that we need to do this systemic change to it as opposed to just doing the one-offs. And we agree with you to some extent that the pre-K and the promise program are either ends. 
but we have not looked at fixing the K-12 system, so we will need less remediation, we'll need less on the, we'll have less reliance upon the pre-K, because uh, we still have some concerns on the pre-K program and what the long-term impact of it is. Uh, there was some Head Start studies that were done a while ago yeah, that sure. you lose the, any value added if you don't have a good system. We believe we should focus it on the K-12, to and some of the other ends will help fix themselves. So your predecessor at RIPAC, Gary Sass, says, listen, the key to reforming education has been proven in, yeah. in Massachusetts. It was Bill Weld. In North Carolina, it was Governor Hunt. It takes leadership from the top position, Khrushchevian with their uh, shoe banging on the thing, saying, we've got to fix this. And in Massachusetts, what's the lesson? The lesson was uh, Bulger plus Weld plus Finneran were all committed, all kind of intellectual snobs in a way. <laughs> Finneran yeah, writes for Go Local, as you probably know. I've heard uh, that, yes. <laughs> and all three of them were, regardless of their difference of party or philosophy on almost every other ideological issue, they were all committed to reforming school education. They weren't getting caught up in any other issue. Right now, we're talking about almost any other issue <laughs> other than schools up at the State House. Yeah, I, there are many other issues on a national level that are now coming down to the state level for <coughs> resolution because yeah. we're not doing it at the federal level, so that more of the issues come to the state level. I would agree with you. Having been in Massachusetts when the miracle occurred uh, in, in Boston, it, we saw the really weight of the issue that were unacceptable to the way we're running education. Right. And a lot of part, parties got together. The business community was supportive of it, promoting the education unions system. Unions joined in. Everybody had a stake in it. Yep. But we haven't gotten that way as of yet because some people still think that our education system, we have quality local schools. And some people will believe that. Uh, we're saying is that we are not that of good quality. I think it's a more of a high-pressured issue that we ought to deal with Listen, right now. Listen, at Hope High School in Providence, Rhode Island, 7% of the kids uh, are proficient in English, 1% are proficient in algebra, 2% are proficient in geometry, okay? Stay home, watch TV all day. You probably have a higher percentage. I mean, watch Wheel of Fortune, you do better on math than you're doing right now. There's something fundamentally wrong with spending $17,000 a year on a student, taxpayers making the investment, you know, the, the family's making the investment, and the education is just not taking place. We, we would agree. I mean, that's yeah. part of why we did this study on why mass was better. We looked at other places, but we, why mass is better. These are some of the structural pieces. It's not the end of the answer. It's not just do a new curriculum and we're done. You, you, we need to have the things we talked about, you're going to then need as mass and others do with the support services around it. We feel that that's the next wave of how do you support individuals and people in the low income communities have need of some more support. We are not doing that as well. We believe also the funding isn't the issue. You have to how it's We're in the ball game on the We're funding. We're the ballpark, so we need to do that. It's not the labor stuff because when we looked at the labor statutes in the two state, their, their labor laws are right. even worse in a sense to some mind than the Rhode Islands. <laughs> right. So we're saying is that's not the issue either. They have the same strong unions. They're, right. they're no weak there as well. No, is... So we have the issue, and I think we never will take, for instance, the, the education system as serious as, as necessary. And we haven't had, I don't think we've had the strong push to say we got to fix this. Is part of it expectation? Is a, a, you, a, you know, we can blame government, we can blame governors, we can blame commissioners, but mm -hmm. part of it is in, is in a um, cultural issue of parents just are not uh, uh, engaged in demanding a higher quality education in a uniform structure way. There's, there's, w once those tests came out, I, I expected there would be some parent groups that emerge statewide demanding improvement, and we've seen we've goose egg. We've been underwhelmed, I think, with yeah. the, the, the reaction to it. That's why we were looking at the mass system, to, to waiting for the right cast, because we knew that the test would not come out well. Uh, we still feel less of a, you know, a really a push to get it done. We feel there is, however, on the legislative side of this, uh, and I think to the somewhat an extent ride into the governor extent as well, that there is more of a push. Let's get some of this fundamental things away, fix them so we are on competitive basis with those Can states. they get but fixed this legislative session? I will give credit to Ruggiero and Mattiello, who have been the most outspoken yeah. in saying, oh my God, what are we doing here? We've already talked to and have uh, 
good discussions with the House and Senate on some package of bills that will address the curriculum, uh, the, the uh, idea of the local school administration, and a couple of other items that we believe will lead us a, a long way. Uh, Neil Steinberg and the foundation has a longer term group working, <laughs> which is an interesting one. We had happen. Neil on a, a oh, few okay. weeks ago. Yeah. I, I, I heard him on the presentation. That's important to sort of frame the longer term picture. We need some immediate ones that we can identify are really crucial and important now that we can do now that will take two or three or four years to run through the system. Uh, some states have done this, but it takes two or three years, but you can see some of the impact on the lower grades. And we say if you do them, then you're looking through as the system that you are better prepared. Because what things you don't want to do is just say, okay, we're going to do a new curriculum next week, and then the following week, we want a 20% increase in our results. We're not going to get that. It takes time. But we also believe that we should stay the course for 10 years at least yeah. to allow this to happen. If we don't, what we've been doing over time is what's the quick fix? Well, listen, we've had every type of commissioner. We've had every type of philosophy. We've reformed reform. I mean, you couldn't, yeah. Wagner versus Gist couldn't be more ideologically or personality that's maybe. That's even part of one of the issues that we face is that you have had one who was a certain type of commissioner, you have another one who is the opposite of the commissioner. The question is maybe we need someone that embodies both sides of this as yeah. a strong enough will, et cetera. I think, you know, Commissioner Wagner tried. I think he was in more of an impression that more of a laid back, more conciliatory approach would be necessary as opposed to leading it. Uh, and we're looking now for who the next commissioner might be. Uh, but in the meantime, I think we still need to do these things. These are the best practices. These are the things that will actually have some impact and work for, for Rhode Island kids. And I, I agree with you. We need to do something now. We can't wait for another year or two or another generation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, John Simmons, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a us. pleasure. Uh, we'll have a full uh, outline on the proposal from RIPEC and the structure of the report, uh, from the report that they've uh, just recently released. Uh, that'll be up and out on Go Local tomorrow uh, in detail. Um, we're going to be back in about five minutes. We're going to take a hard stop right now. We'll be back in about five minutes with our next guest, and we'll be talking about entrepreneurship. I want to thank John Simmons from RIPEC and his good work on education, and we'll see you back in a few minutes. Thank you.